This program is a presentation of UCTV for educational and non-commercial use only. So we're going to have a, f a few brief overviews uh, on the peer program. We're lucky to have Michael Seaman here from the CEC to do that. Uh, and then Bill McTeague from the UCSB uh, uh, Student Affairs will give a few comments on uh, the rec center and their designs for going to zero net energy with all their buildings. And then uh, a little bit on the design threat for the zero net energy rec center. And then Corey Jackson will give us a brief overview before the tour and she'll be helping leading the tour. And we encourage everyone to hold sort of their questions unless they're really burning to ask us while the tour because we'll have a fair bit of time to do that. So without further uh, delay, I want to introduce Michael Seaman. Michael? Thank you, Carl. Okay, I'd like to talk very briefly about uh, the PEER program. PEER stands for Public Interest Energy Research, and it's the California Energy Commission's research program. We get about $80 million a year from uh, public goods money. That's a small portion of all of the dollars that are collected from everybody's utility bills. You know, that 45 cents or 60 cents a month multiplied by everybody who pays the utility bill. That underwrites the investor-owned utilities uh, rebates and incentive programs that are also pays for the peer program and the Energy Commission. Within peer, we have a number of silos. I work in one of them, the Buildings End Use Energy Program. You can see the approximate distribution of our uh, research work in the pie chart. This is something I think we all know that buildings are a big part of the energy problem. And I hope we all understand that buildings are also a big part of the climate change problem. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with AB 32. That's the uh, California leading program to deal with climate change. And the Energy Commission has recommended that energy efficiency play a leading role in addressing climate change. Efficiency is not sexy but it's really important. It's also the most shovel-ready thing you can do. A lot of uh, people in our community, you know, the sustainability community, the environmental community, the community of people who care about the planet, are, are easily convinced that we should all talk about solar PV. I have it on my rooftop at home. Um, it doesn't pay back. It doesn't pencil back. It's got like a 30-year payback period. I have it because SMUD, my local utility paid for half the cost of it, and the rest of it I rolled into a 30-year mortgage. So I'm not worried about that. And I love it. But energy efficiency gives you way more bang for the buck, far quicker. It's the first thing you need to do. You need to right-size the load before you get into renewables. This is the official policy of the state of California, and it's what we do in the Building Sand Use Energy Program. Some examples of the kinds of projects that uh, we work on. <coughs> um, I manage lighting research con contracts uh, for luminaires and control systems. Uh, there are others on our staff who uh, work with HVAC. Um, I also manage building envelope research, uh, fenestration, moisture, shading, uh, building seals. Uh, Brad Meister in the cubicle next to mine uh, is working on the emerging consumer electronics uh, component. Consumer electronics are a big chunk of buildings and use energy. In fact, it's a very fast growing chunk. Uh, we never had cable at home until last January. My wife put her foot down and said, okay, we're gonna do this. 
now we have more devices that are consuming power 24 by 7. We have set-top boxes we didn't used to have. Uh, I bought a, a rechargeable drill uh, about three years ago. I never had one before. And I always have it plugged into the wall because I always want to make sure, you know, I, you never know when you have to use it, right? Um, we also have projects in systems integration, uh, whole building systems, and sustainable communities, um, the design tools, the software, the evaluation tools, and so forth. Everything we do is about getting products into the marketplace quickly. Uh, in theory, we're supposed to be able to invent some stuff and get it into the marketplace so people will happily buy it uh, after about three years. Um, that gets us into the valley of death. Uh, we have wonderful products, and they don't necessarily gain traction in the marketplace. I'll get to that in just a moment. Our pathways to the marketplace um, are numerous. One is through Title 24 and Title 20. Uh, we are supposed to inform codes and standards with the uh, outcome of our research work. Uh, every now and then, the um, manufacturers come to us and say, look, we've got this great um, idea that we've been working on in our skunk works. Uh, come partner with us, and we promise there'll be some energy efficiency come out the other end. And occasionally we do that, and it ha it's disconnected from Title 24, and it's disconnected from the utilities. It's just something we do to partner, because we're in the public-private partnerships. Probably our most significant pathway is through the investor-owned utilities and any of the municipal utilities that want to play along with it, uh, such as SMUD, which, by the way, is a really great municipal utility. Um, we, in essence, create a steady stream of products and services, innovations about energy efficiency for buildings that go into the front end of the emerging technology pipelines at the utilities. The utilities then evaluate the products and services in their emerging technologies programs so they can make a decision whether the product and service is of value in their service area, whether they should incentivize it, give rebates, put it into savings by design, or various programs like that. One of our uh, important related pathways is through the campuses. Demonstrations are very important to us. Um, sometimes we do demos through the utilities. Other times we do demos through the campuses because the campuses are large facility owner and operators, and it's helpful if we can acquire the economies of scale that are inherent in the campuses. Um, you can see, for example, we have something like 20 demonstrations that we've put in play uh, right here at UCSB. If you go to our website, peerpartnershipdemonstrations.com, uh, you'll find a, your way to a, a website that says Teradex in it, and uh, that will get you this um, Google Maps uh, portrayal of our entire information base from that. You can obtain the case studies. You can get the um, two-page tech briefs. You can get um, the product specification in the CSI master spec format, so you can drop it directly into your uh, procurement documents. It's a very uh, content-rich uh, website. And we've only started to begin to add content into it. We've got a lot more that we can put into this. An example of our demonstrations is the, uh, our latest demo, which is at the Bidwell Mansion in Chico. Anybody here from Northern California? OK, so uh, if you head on up there. I, I brought my uh, feline entertainment device here to show you. Um, those are the new LED downlights. Uh, from uh, Cooper, and I believe they're uh, Cree emitters. Um, this is a low glare downlight. Uh, won't go into detail about this. It's the kind of thing we can answer on our, our travels around and, and at our booth. Uh, but it's one of uh, several kinds of products that we invent in our, in our program. And next, I'm going to turn it over to Carl again. Uh, I think first we'll have Bill McTeague uh, give us an introduction over uh, the student affairs uh, overall plan. Uh, but I'd like to take this moment just to really express a lot of uh, appreciation and thanks to um, Michael and his support, uh, Corey and her great work getting these demonstrations that you'll see in a little while, and Bill McTeague and Gary 
Sturridge for their leadership on campus on the uh, sustainability and really deep energy savings and getting to net zero. They have a unique approach that's been very productive. So with that, Bill, please. Good morning. Um, my name is Bill McTague, and I'm the, um, basically the chief financial officer for the Division of Student Affairs. And um, um, we're, we're real excited to be partnering with Edison and the peer group. Uh, to give you a brief overview of what Student Affairs is about is we provide the primary services to the 20,000 students here on campus, um, including the Student Health Center, the Counseling and Career Center. Uh, we have a children's center. We have athletic buildings. Um, and we also oversee the uh, recreation program. We have an annual budget of over $60 million per year. Um, the value of our buildings that we support uh, has an asset value of over $200 million. Um, and as a division, we spend for utilities uh, over a million dollars a year. So there's a pretty big interest in this uh, as we go forward. We also, as we run student affairs, we have many um, student governance boards. So for example, the, the students pay a fee of $34, actually $68 a quarter. It generates three or four million dollars, and the students oversee this building. They oversee our student resource building, which I think is one of the site tour spots. Um, so we have an interesting relationship that we've developed here. Uh, and from that contact with the students who are very interested in green initiatives, the Division of Student Affairs has adopted sort of a trend, twin planning principles. Uh, uh, first one is net zero on all our buildings. And the second one, which I think we're uh, uh, leading the way on, uh, is to get LEED EB Platinum uh, uh, for all our facilities. Um, okay. um, for the RECSEN, it's the first existing recreation center in the United States to get uh, a LEED EB Silver. We're working with uh, the, uh, a consulting firm right now to start moving us to Platinum. Um, with the strategic planning efforts, and this is sort of contradicting Michael uh, a bit, and that, that's with the student input, we are very interested in adopting the renewable energy technologies. And the recreation center, in fact, we put a 155 kilowatt uh, solar array up there before we've implemented the um, uh, efficiency uh, investments. And one of the points that, that w we want to make is that you'll never get to net zero if you don't start adopting the emergent uh, energy technologies. We are, we are committed to this as a long-term planning goal, and um, we will continue to chip away at it over the next uh, 10 to 15 years. So um, I can get that far. Um, as part of this effort, we also were working with the Southern California Edison and their Emerging Technology Group and their Sustainable Communities Group in uh, conjunction with UCSB on doing a design charrette for the uh, recreation center. So this would be one of the first attempts to take an existing recreation center and see if you could get it converted to zero net energy as an existing set of three buildings, an Olympic-sized pool, another pool, and some other uh, facilities. So we really had a few kickoff meetings starting uh, early this year, organizing it, looking at what we could do, looking at the different interest levels and uh, kinds of things we could uh, do there, and then also working with them for some of our dis uh, demonstrations here on campus for the sustainability tour. So as Bill had said, the Recreation Center is one of the first LEED EB buildings uh, at, in uh, the country, and they're uh, you said gold and going towards platinum. Um, so that consists of a lot of their efforts to put in the photovoltaic system, put in the uh, energy efficiency measures. And as uh, uh, it had been said, that they did it a little differently. They put the energy uh, production in first, which in, in a sense is the uh, backwards compared to a lot of the uh, trends. But if you have a net goal that's a set time period, you're going to have to do both. So I think Bill's point's been very interesting that if he put his photovoltaics in first, he would be saving money, fixing his cost, and guaranteeing a stability of his cost 
that in the worst case would allow him to have extra money from those savings to self-finance his efficiency if he did it that way. But if he did his efficiency first, it would be a little harder because the rates would still be going up. So we uh, work with SCE, set up a uh, hourly energy analysis model of the entire complex, and we work through uh, calibrating it with the uh, uh, energy data that we have, uh, and then did a design shred of what sorts of things could we possibly do to try to get it towards net zero. Uh, the key things that came out for energy efficiency, lighting, I think we can save somewhere, the group, 60 to 80 percent of the lighting. Uh, and our examples that you'll see today in the task ambient lighting, we're saving over 65 percent of the lighting in the retrofit. Uh, in some of the other areas, we have similar kinds of saving. Uh, the pool and the pool heating really becomes a, an issue, how you do heat recovery off the existing equipment or how you use heat pump technology, either regular heat pumps or ground couple heat pumps to leverage the efficiency into COPs of four to six or so uh, and augment it with uh, extra electrons or with uh, solar water heating or some other technology. So that's an ongoing process. We're in the first stage. Uh, we'll be doing uh, some runs of the uh, new suggestions and, and continuing uh, working into uh, a plan that we can actually implement later this year. Uh, so the goal was a day-long design threat uh, on June 5th. We had a uh, set of world experts and the whole building approach. Uh, they had done a good deal of background work on what was available in the wind resources, the solar resources, et cetera, to uh, look at. Uh, and we were building, uh, actually, a, uh, part of what we're trying to do is build a model of how this process works, what we can learn and, and share with the industry on what steps it takes and what kinds of uh, monitoring and uh, field data you need to really calibrate the model correctly. So, uh, and what it really takes to take an existing building and make it zero net energy, especially with a, a pool load as big as uh, Olympic-sized pools. So, uh, as I said, next, this is the first uh, in a, I think, long-term partnership within Pure and uh, the campus and SCE and others as we uh, move forward. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Corey Jackson who will give us an overview of the technologies on the tour. Hi, good afternoon. Um, as Carla has mentioned, uh, I do the lighting technology demonstrations for the PEER program. I'm a development engineer at the California Lighting Technology Center. Uh, so my job is to take all the wonderful things that have been developed through the PEER program and actually take them out in the field and uh, find out what works, what doesn't work. Um, find ways to make it better, work with the installation crews to understand installation issues, things of that sort. We can make anything work in the lab. Um, getting it out in the real world has proved much more difficult, so this is a real valuable piece of the program, is, is finding out what needs to be being better so that it's very easy for all the facility managers and all the folks that buy these things to, to make them work the first time. So we're gonna do um, a tour, and I'm gonna be real quick talking so we can get out there and see some of the lighting demonstrations that we've done here on campus to help them move towards net zero. And we're gonna see some I'll admit that work, and we're gonna see some that don't, and that's part of the learning process. So hopefully when we come back next year to uh, LA Community College and do this again, we'll be able to report that we've fixed some of these bugs. But the uh, five groups that we're gonna look at um, our bi-level smart exterior lighting, so doing an adaptive strategy for exterior instead of lighting to full brightness 24 hours a day or you know 12 hours a night. Uh, we're looking at wire wireless controls for those applications as well as applications, um, interior applications. Um, perfect for retrofit, so we can make it cost effective to go do some of these advanced technologies without rewiring. Um, We'll look at integrated office lighting systems. Those are over at the rec center. Like Carl had mentioned, we ended up with about 67% uh, energy savings compared to what they already had in place. Uh, interior lighting controls, we'll also take a peek over there. Um, advanced day lighting, occupancy sensing, and um, a whole suite of controls that work together to really get that next step in savings beyond the simple retrofit. And then we will also look at um, interior LED lighting if we have some, some time. Things are pretty stretched out, so I know everyone's hungry and is going to want to go to lunch. So if we have time, we'll look at um, a few things over at Carrillo as well. 
So I have maps up here. There's a tour today. There's a tour this evening. If anyone wants to come out and see the evening, um, all the uh, exterior luminaires at night so you can get a good visual comparison against some of the more traditional fixtures. And then we have a tour tomorrow too. So if anyone um, wants to attend that, we'll have uh, one tomorrow from 1 to 2.